In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our ever-present Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we welcome several of our younger parishioners to Holy Communion for the first time, we also turn to today's Gospel. We hear the Lord Jesus showing to us his ever-present love so that we might place our faith and our trust in God's love for us. Let us begin this Mass by first calling to mind our sins and then asking the Lord for his divine mercy. Lord, for the times that we have failed to recognize how deep is your love for us, Lord, have mercy. Christ, for the times that we have not lived our lives in the light of your loving presence, Christ have mercy. And Lord, for the times that we have not been your people, sharing your goodness and your grace, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, and may he bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Today's first reading is taken from the second book of Kings. In the tenth month of the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his whole army advanced against Jerusalem and camped around it and built siege walls on every side. The siege of the city continued until the eleventh year of Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, when famine had gripped the city and the people had no more bread, the city walls were breached. Then the king and all the soldiers left the city by night through the gate between the two walls that was near the king's garden. Since the Chaldeans had the city surrounded, they went in the direction of the Arabah. But the Chaldean army perceived the king and overtook him in the desert near Jericho, abandoned by his old army. The king was therefore arrested and brought to Riblah to the king of Babylon, who pronounced sentence on him. He had Zedekiah's sons slain before his eyes. Then he blinded Zedekiah bound him with feathers, and had him brought to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, this was the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, captain of the bodyguard, came to Jerusalem as the representative of the king of Babylon. He burned the house of the Lord, the palace of the king, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every large building was destroyed by fire. Then the Chaldean troops who were with the captain of the guard tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, led into exile the last of the people remaining in the city and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon and the last of the artisans. But some of the country's poor, Zebuzaradan, captain of the guard, left behind as vine dressers and farmers. The word of the Lord. The refrain for today's responsorial psalm is, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. 
by the streams of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land, we hung up our hearts. Though there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous, sing for us the songs of Zion. How could we sing a song for the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Today's Gospel verse. Alleluia, 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 Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia. May the Lord be with you. Our gospel reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountain, Great crowds followed him, and then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleaned immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one. But go yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Notice in today's Gospel, Jesus performs this wonderful miracle by healing this poor man who had leprosy. Now remember back then, leprosy was still regarded as a very contagious disease. People who came down with leprosy had to live apart from everyone else. People who came down with leprosy had no cure. They simply could watch as the disease just grew worse and worse and worse, and they eventually died from it. So for Jesus to heal this leper, was a wonderful disease. But you notice, at the very end of this gospel passage, Jesus tells the man who had been cured, go show yourself to the priest, but see that you tell no one. Now, showing oneself to the priest, what would happen is, the priest would simply pull one of the person's hairs. If the hair had skin attached to it, then it was clear that the person was still leper. On the other hand, if the hair came out and had no skin attached to it, that proved that the person had been cured. So that's why Jesus sent the leper to the priest so that he could be allowed to enter back into normal society. But, I mean, this is such a wonderful miracle. Why was it that Jesus would tell that healed leper to tell no one about it? Why not let the word of Jesus' divine presence spread? Notice, Jesus did not simply want to be known as some traveling magician. Jesus did not want people to simply relate to him because of what he could do for them. Jesus obviously wanted us not only to recognize his loving power, but he wanted us to recognize the depth of his love for us, he wanted us to hear and live his teachings of eternal life. He wanted us to hear and live the very commandments, the very teachings that he would give us as to how we might become vessels of his love. Jesus wanted to be recognized as so much more than some traveling magician or somebody who would give people special favors every now and then if he happened to like them. Jesus recognized our need to worship 
the one true God. Jesus recognized our need to be taught how to do that. Jesus recognized our need to come to believe in eternal life and allow ourselves to accept that very eternal life so that we might give of ourselves and our lives to the word and the will of the Lord Jesus. Let us now present to his heavenly Father our prayers and our petition. That we might ever hear the word of God and live it with our whole heart, mind, body, and soul, we pray to the Lord. That we might turn to Almighty God in our times of need, but also what should be our times of gratitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we might allow ourselves to value, to live, and to accept God's gift of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord for Joseph I. Vu, for our own individual intentions, as well as our personal prayers of thanksgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who will receive the Holy Eucharist for the first time today, that they might ever be in love with Christ Jesus and in love with his gift of Holy Communion, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray. Eternal Father, you show to us the healing, loving power of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we ever be devoted to the Lord. May we ever live lives of grateful presence in your presence as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, I know that Jesus healed the leper, but I don't think he's going to take the cover off of these uh, uh, communion hosts. Excuse me a couple of minutes. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your gift of eternal life. We also thank you for the gift of scissors. Blessed to you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed to you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
let us pray. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and pray, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created me. And when he was truly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all hope. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. If we see the Lord's presence and the Lord's goodness, then let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint John the Evangelist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who blesses us with the gifts of his divine love and his eternal life. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone, for distribution of Holy Communion, we'd like to give the Holy Eucharist first of all to our First Communion candidate. Then after that, we'll come to the pews one at a time, asking you to receive Holy Communion if you would simply go to the right hand end of each of the pew sections where you will see.
That is why renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Everyone, we would now like to present the First Communion Certificate for our young parishioners who've received Holy Communion for the first time today. May the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended.